Good afternoon, everyone, uh, and thank you for joining the uh, Coffee with Care Safely mini webinar. My name is Raj Shah, and I'm with Care Safely. Hopefully, you all have gotten a cup of coffee or tea or any other favorite beverage. Uh, it is Friday afternoon, after all, and the folks on the East Coast, you all are an hour ahead. So whatever your drink is, I'm glad you're here with us. Uh, we know your time is really valuable, so I'm going to take just a minute to provide a little bit of context and then dive right in and demonstrate the uh, Care Safely platform and how it all works. We'll wrap up in the promised 20 minutes, including time for Q&A. And if you have any uh, questions, just there's a panel in the Zoom's uh, section in the middle uh, Q&A, and just ask any questions you want along the way as I'm doing the demonstrations, and then we'll walk through all the questions at the end. So with that, let's uh, get started. Uh, just a little bit of context before uh, we get uh, start showing you the actual demo itself. Uh, if you're like most uh, skilled nursing, assisted living, memory care, hospice, or home health organizations, COVID's been a bit of a wake-up call, right, for the entire industry in terms of uh, the weaknesses around infection control and safety programs. Uh, over 100,000 seniors have died, and working in senior living is actually right now the most dangerous job in America, more dangerous than logging. And at the same time, you and your team have been doing amazing work and heroic work in taking care of your staff and residents and patients. But if you step back a second, just kind of think about, do you have all the right tools to do your work, especially around safety and compliance and infection control programmatically and strategically, i.e., are you doing heroic work, but not necessarily strategically thoughtful work? That's what we're all about at Scare Safely. So when it comes to infection control, safety, and compliance, our sense is based on the conversations we've had with hundreds of organizations, you're probably using paper-based assessments, audits, and checks, and then transferring some of that information into emails, phone calls, spreadsheets, PowerPoints, and hoping all those risk areas and things are getting done. But what if you could have a system that tracks and manages your entire risk control, all the different risk areas, the compliance areas, the infection control areas in one platform. And that's essentially what Care Safely is all about. So let me dive right in and kind of show you how it all works. We essentially have four key components to our platform, assess, act, audit, and analyze. And those are the four components I'm gonna walk you through here momentarily. The first point is assess. Essentially, what you want to do is identify all the risk areas related to your facility, whether it's COVID or other things. So let me show you what we've done. We've essentially built a series of assessments around MRSA, C. diff, employee safety, patient safety, and a series of assessments specifically for COVID, depending on the type of facility you might be. We've also actually taken the Massachusetts state's the state of Massachusetts own infection control audit, which they use for auditing their uh, all their facilities, nursing homes in their area, and put that on our system as well. So let's take, for example, the skilled nursing facility audit or assessment. Now, if you have multiple facilities, the list would show up, but if you only had a single facility, of course, that would show up. Now, what an assessment is from our perspective is what we've done is looked at, for this case, for COVID and skilled nursing, we looked at the latest guidance from CDC, CMS, public health departments, and assembled all the different risk areas that are relevant to a skilled nursing facility. But we didn't just stop with CDC and CMS and public health departments. We actually went through our industry advisory panels to skilled nursing professionals, nurses, DONs, and had them look at this assessment, make sure it's actually real world applicable, like it actually makes sense in a real world setting. Because sometimes CDC, CMS stuff might sound like it's a bit academic at times and a bit government -y. And what we wanted to make sure was this was really practical uh, assessment that makes sense for the skilled nursing facilities. And of course, as the science and best practices and the guidance changes, we automatically, not automatically, we actually do some work to it, but we update these assessments as well. And so make sure that they're always uh, the latest. So for example, about a month and a half ago, I think it was, the CMS changed its rules around visitation rights. And we, within a week, uh, updated our assessment as well. So as you will notice, and all the assessments follow a similar template, if you will, which is uh, it's a guided tour essentially of all the different areas you need to consider. Uh, in this case, for the skilled nursing COVID-19 assessment, there is eight different sections that you'd have to go through. Program management, staffing, PPE, resident care, dining and facilities, stakeholder communications, 
visitor management, and then screening, testing, and outbreak planning. The idea essentially is uh, you would assemble typically the director of nursing, the director of care, uh, maybe the administrator or the executive director. The group would get together via Zoom or in person uh, and go through this assessment. We recommend at least once a quarter right now, and then eventually it might be once every uh, six months or even once a year, once the COVID challenges subside. But the idea essentially is you would go through this very structured, completely 360 degree meeting. We've thought about everything that we could think of based on all the guidance we could get to work, walk through as a team and work through these different questions. And I'm just gonna randomly going through these questions so you can get a sense of some of the questions that are and the risk factors that are uh, you know, built into our assessments. The other thing about our assessments is even though we pre-built these, there may be unique state and local guidelines or your facility might have some very unique requirements or things. So you can actually take our assessment and customize it to make it look exactly the way you need it to look. So there's a customization feature as well. So you can make it fit exactly the way your facility needs to be. And I'm just jumping through this real quick because there's 79 different questions. So you get a quick feel. I'm now on the stakeholder communication section of it. So you can see we've done a very comprehensive job of thinking through this thing. The first time you all do this, it may take a few hours and that's okay. This is really important stuff. Uh, typically what will happen is the second and third time you do this, a lot of the things you've already sorted out and thought through. Uh, first time, many of these questions you may not have thought of risk factors. So it does, uh, the, the time that it takes to do some of these things does uh, get a lot shorter second and third time around, obviously, because you've addressed most of these issues at that point. Of course, if you get busy in the middle of the day, something happens, emergency, you can always save and exit and come back to these assessments. So now I'm on the last section called screening, testing, and outbreak planning. And again, you can get a really good sense of how comprehensive uh, the work we've done is to, to build these assessments. Once you're done with these assessment, this assessment, for example, I'll hit the save and continue button. You can, of course, review it and make sure you're good with everything. You'll notice that the answers are either yes in progress or not applicable. In progress typically means that you may have done some work on that, but you have a little bit more to do or you've not even started, you got a lot more work to do in that area. You can of course print the assessments as well. So that's that's the quick way to look at an assessment. Let's say we complete that and you can see that that's right here. Now you can also of course analyze this assessment immediately. So instead of it being on paper and then translating into a spreadsheet and then a PowerPoint, you have instant access to see, okay, in this case, Again, by the way, I'm showing you everything in a demo environment. So none of this is real data. Uh, we have a whole production system for our clients. This is purely to show you uh, represented what it would look like. So the one I just did a minute ago, uh, about 45% of the questions, uh, risk areas were good on. There's about 47% that we've got to do some work on by the different areas. So you have a very quick understanding of where you stand overall. But the most important part of all this is the second piece, which is creating action plans. And what an action plan is, is you pick the area you want to work on. Let's say we pick PPE. It automatically populates all the in-progress items that we identified in the assessment and then puts it in here. And let's say we're going to work on this one. Facility has a reliable primary PPE supplier that maintains adequate inventory levels to meet your peak usage needs. What an action plan does, essentially, it's an incredibly simple but incredibly powerful way of saying, okay, what's the problem we have with this issue, this risk? What are we gonna to do to fix it? What are the specific steps we're gonna take? And I'm just gonna put some blank stuff here so you can see how it works, otherwise it won't let me go forward. Um, who are we going to assign to fix this issue from our team? When do we want this thing to be due by? Oh, maybe not, maybe not Christmas Eve, that's a bad idea. <laughs> Let's do the 30th of December. Uh, and then if we have a sense of what it's going to cost, maybe a number or zero, because we don't know what this is going to cost us. So now you have an action plan to mitigate that risk with accountability of who's going to be responsible for it, timelines of when it's going to get done by clear action items. So nothing gets lost in the ether uh, between staff meetings or in emails back and forth or voicemail. Everything's now transparent and documented. Uh, and then we also send alerts out. So a week before this is this action plan is due, if Ariel hasn't finished it, she would get an, uh, an alert saying, hey, you've got a week left. And then after it's the due date, she would get another alert saying, hey, it's overdue. And so would the, the person who assessed, who uh, created the action plan in the first week, they would also get that. So it's a way to make sure that, let's say you identified 20 uh, items in your assessment were open items. 
this is a way to go from 20 to 15 to 10 to five to zero over a few weeks or month. So you're constantly improving and, and reducing all of your risk areas. So that's what an action plan does. It's a transparent way to hold folks accountable, to have a clear action plan, clear deadlines and clear budgets. And then if you need to do more work, you can always edit that assessment. So as you learn more, you can say, okay, you know, when is it gonna be due and all that? We can do all of that right now and hit save, there we go. So now it's an open action plan to her, to Ariel. You can also create action plans on your own if you needed to. So you've assessed the situation, understand all the risk factors related to either COVID or infection control or patient safety. You've now created action plans to mitigate those risks. Now we do audits to stay in compliance, to stay always on top of things. And we have three types of audits, COVID self-checks and uh, audits, uh, COVID uh, symptom checks for your visitors and residents and patients, observational audits to make sure your staff members are following the, the protocols and the safety standards and the competencies, and inventory audits of your PPE inventory, dining, and uh, crash card. Let me walk you through the first one. This is the same as up here, so I'll just go up here to show it to you. You can do a round uh, of your residents and walk through, you know, for each resident, their room number, take the vitals, and then check the five key questions related to their symptoms. So you could very quickly do an entire round of, let's say, 30 patients in a, in a facility or 50 patients, whatever the number is, in a matter of, you know, half an hour or so. You can do a similar thing for visitor check-ins, whether uh, you have a kiosk or someone is actually checking someone in if they're a visitor or contractor. Same set of questions. We just uh, ask for a phone number for contact tracing, and we only ask for the temperature in that case. And then an extra question around if they've been in a high-risk uh, area the last 14 days. And then finally, for the staff members themselves, there are COVID checks. They can do this on, on the system here. What we thought a more innovative way of doing it is actually, let's say these four folks are gonna be showing up for work for the next shift. You can actually just send them an email on their smartphones. So they would do the same five questions and respond back. And if they answered yes to one of the COVID symptoms, both the supervisor would get in, in an alert saying, hey, so-and-so has said yes to that. So the idea essentially is before they come into the facility, they've done the, the, the check either from their home an hour before or even from the parking lot before they enter the facility. This also gives the, the staffing folks a, a heads up if someone's not gonna be coming in for a first shift. So those are all the different COVID checks you can do for both residents, visitors, and, and staff. Let me go back to the other types of audits, which are observational audits. What our research shows is if you just hire someone new, and I know there's a ton of turnover in, in many of your facilities, if you just hire somebody new and put them on the, on the floor, you'll get 68% compliance to your safety protocols. If you do really good training, you'll get 82% compliance. And if you do three observations where you're watching them and documenting how they're doing these different things for competency, you'll get 92%, sorry, 94% compliance. So it's a huge lift if you're using these observations to make sure that they're following the protocol. And so very simple, uh, let's pick Donning or yeah. You would pick the staff member that you're gonna be observing and you would ask them, you would watch them doing these different things in the right sequence, et cetera. So it's a really powerful way of making sure that your staff are following the stuff on the floor, not just in the training room. And then finally, inventory audits, uh, very simple. Basically for each facility, you can do these audits on a daily, weekly basis. All the different key areas of inventory are here. You can also add your own items if you have unique items uh, as well. So very quick way, the math is all done automatically for you based on what you need and have. We'll also actually, uh, in a few weeks, we'll be adding a third button called suggested quantity based on your burn rate itself. So if you have a week's worth of burn and we can calculate how much you're gonna need, we'll suggest that as a third column. And then finally, uh, the fourth component to the solution is analyze the ability to see everything because everything is digitized from the point of entry. You can see exactly what's going on. So let's say we looked at skilled nursing for, all, let's say you have multiple facilities um, across, let's say two month period. You can now see exactly how the facilities are doing against each other. So you can benchmark across facilities or you can just pick that one facility and see how they've done over time to see if they're making progress or not. And if you wanted to see, okay, what's the latest on this one, you can very quickly see where the issues are. So if you have multiple facilities, this is an incredibly powerful way to, 
to track across facilities. And if you have a single facility, you can see how you're tracking over time. For COVID audits, you can also review whether staff have it, who are the ones that, that currently have it, et cetera. For observational audits, you can identify your high risk people. So in this case, let's say hand hygiene, you can see Penny didn't answer any of her questions correctly or observation correctly. But then a month later, she took another one and she's done much, much better. So it's a way for you to identify high risk employees as well as the ones that are doing a great job and you give them an attaboy. And then finally for inventory, very simply, we just show what your latest inventory levels are. It doesn't really matter what your inventory was two months ago. It's really what's the latest so you can reorder and things like that. Phoenix, for example, hasn't done one. You call them, say, hey, can you do the audit now? And as soon as they finish it, you'll be able to see it online. So that's a uh, really fast, <laughs> uh, usually it takes us about 30, 40 minutes uh, to go through some of this stuff, but it's a really fast view of how you can manage your entire infection control, safety, quality, and compliance all through a digital platform like us. I'm sure some of you are all thinking, okay, sounds great, Raj, but uh, what's it cost? Uh, and the cost is actually, and we know how hard it is, especially with COVID, how hard the budgets have been this year. Uh, so what we've built is a really, really affordable cost structure, which is for a facility, it's only $190 per month plus $3 per employee. So if you've got, let's say, 50 people in your single location, that works out to about $350 a month. So incredibly powerful solution for an incredibly affordable price, price point. And that includes everything, all of the stuff you're seeing here, all the pre-built assessments, the ability to do your own assessments. Uh, as well as a US-based support team, actually, not just US-based, Austin-based. Most of us are here in uh, Austin as well. So we, we provide world-class support to ensure you're, you can get up and running. And it takes about an hour or so to get up and running. There's really not much. We just need your uh, email uh, as a corporate admin, and then we'll provide that to you. Uh, the admin section is right here, and it's also incredibly you know, easy to use. You can manage your facilities from this screen and manage your users from this screen. There are different roles that you can also assign corporate administrator, facility administrator, or a staff level who will have less uh, access to things. So that